Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here today. I was going to go over the math portion of a utilities entrance exam. This is specifically for the C Seattle Utility District entrance exam sample problems um, for the apprenticeship program. So what I do is I definitely have a notebook out in front of you, paper and pencil. You want to pause the video, do the problems first, do the best you can, unpause the video and watch how I do them. The more problems you do, the better you get, get at them. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Some of them I'll show some tips and tricks that'll help you out a little bit. And some of them are just uh, math facts that you kind of have to know. The first part of the exam is reading comprehension and some other pieces about reading pay stubs and safety reports. And in this video, I'm just going to do the math portion. Okay, so let's get started. Number 26 right here. The rule on adding decimals is you have to line up that decimal place. So I have 4.78 plus 5.2 and my decimal places are lined up. Before I even do this problem though, I might just want to look at it. I have a little bit more than four, a little bit more than five. That's going to be a fair bit more than nine. Nowhere near nine, nowhere near nine. There's nine and some change. Nowhere near nine. So I know it's going to have to be C. I don't really have to do this. I could just go right to answer C. However, just to show you the rule of adding decimals, I line them up, I get eight, add down nine, decimal place stays there, four and five is nine, 9.98. Okay, number 27 right here. Now we're multiplying decimals, not adding them. The rule is keep track of how many decimal places it's over. So here it's not over any, it's 95.0, and here it's over one, two, six percent, right? 0 0.06 is six percent, five is close to five, five percent of a hundred is about five. If I look at my answers, there's nothing here even close to five except for one of them, so it's going to be answer D. But to learn how to multiply decimals, I'll multiply it out. So I have 95 times 0.06. I multiply this together, 30, carry the 3, 54, and 3 is 57. I have a placeholder, 0, 0. I add down to get 0, 7, 5. My decimal place is over one, two places. So I go over one, two, and I get that 5.7, answer D. Problem number 28, again, pause the video, do the problem first, watch how I do it. We're talking about fractions and we're multiplying fractions. Multiplying fractions is pretty easy. You multiply across the top, you multiply across the bottom. It's adding and subtracting fractions that's more difficult with the common denominator. Before I multiply, I could reduce if there's anything in common in the numerator at the top and the denominator. So I can see right here, a seven goes into here one time, a seven goes into here one time. I'm all done reducing, one times one is one. Multiply across the bottom and I have one eleventh. Answer A right there. Okay, problem 28 was multiplying fractions. 29 is dividing fractions. Dividing fractions is a little tricky if I have like one fifth divided by two fifths. The way I divide fractions is I multiply by the reciprocal. So I keep one fifth the same. I change that division to multiplication. Reciprocal means I flip it over. So the way I divide is I multiply by the reciprocal. Anything I can cancel, fives will cancel, multiply across the top to get one half. So that's how I divide those fractions. This one is dividing fractions and then there's another skill built in of mixed numbers. Mixed numbers is when you have a whole number and a fraction after it. So on 29, I have five and five, six, divided by one and two thirds. So the first thing I have to do is turn it into improper fraction. The way I do that is I take the whole number, multiply it by the bottom number. So the whole number times the denominator, five times six is 30. 30 plus five is 35, six. So this is an equivalent of this. Mixed number, improper fraction. I'm gonna do that to this fraction as well. I'm gonna still have divided by. One times three is three, plus two is five thirds. So now I got 35 sixths divided by five thirds. The rule of dividing fractions is multiplying. So I change that to multiplication. Multiplying by the reciprocal, I turn that over. See if I could cancel anything. Three goes into here once, three goes into here twice. Five goes into here once, five goes into here seven times. It's reduced. 
Now I multiply across the top to get seven times one over two times one, seven halves. I don't see that answer anywhere up there. So I'm gonna to have to turn it back into a mixed number. The way I do that is two goes into seven three times with one left over. So seven divided by two, seven halves is the same as three and one halves. And the reverse of that to check, three times two is six plus one, gives me a seven halves. Correct answer, answer B, three and a half. A lot of, lot of skills there. First, you got to know the rules for dividing fractions, and you need to know the rules for converting uh, mixed numbers into improper fractions, and then going back once you're all done. Okay, problem 30 over here. We're adding fractions now. Remember, multiplying was a little bit easier than adding. The, the key on adding fractions is they have to have a common denominator. That bottom number has to be the same, and in this case, it is. So I have 3 eighths. All I'm doing is rewriting it plus 2 eighths. That bottom number is the same. I add across the top to get 5, and then I keep the bottom number. So 3 eighths plus 2 eighths is 5 eighths. That's your answer right there. Answer D here. Moving on to number 31. Now I'm subtracting fractions. Adding and subtracting are really the same operations, but I have to have that common denominator. I do not have that common denominator. This is 4 fifths. 3, 4, so I've got to find a number that both of them will go into. So 4, 8, no, 10, no. The only number they'll both go into is 20. So I'm going to have to multiply this by a factor of 1. So it has to be the same in the top and the bottom. 4 over 4 to get a 20 on the bottom. So I multiply by 1, doesn't change the value of it. 4 fourths is 16. 5 times 4 is 20. This is an equivalent fraction, but it has a denominator 20. And I'm going to do the same thing here. To get a 20 on the bottom here, I'm going to go multiply by 5 over 5. That's going to give me 15, 3 times 5, over 20. Now I have that same common denominator, same bottom number, and I'm subtracting, so I do the same thing. I just use the top number, 16 minus 15 is 1, keeping the bottom number the same. So 16 20 minus 15 20 gives me the 1 20 Answer B right there. So adding and subtracting, common denominator, multiplying, multiply across the top, across the bottom, dividing, multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, I'll just do one more problem. This is a word problem. This is, these are hard because it you know, combines your reading comprehension, your decoding with the math. The key on these things is break them down, put them into kind of like equations, lay out what you have, uh, and go slow enough that you don't make any careless mistakes. So let's go ahead and do 32. Pause the video, do 32, and watch how I do it. As a new apprentice, Carl bought two pairs of boots. So I got two boots, two jackets, two thermal jackets, and three pairs of denim overalls. How many different pairs of boots, jacket, overall combinations can you wear using these new items? So the way, this is a kind of a probability problem to figure out the number of ways. You kind of think of it as there are three slots. How many things could go in this slot? There are two possibility of boots, and then two possibilities of jackets, and then three possibilities of denims. So he could get, and then you multiply them together, you get two times two is four, four times three is 12. Correct answer is C right there. Let's kind of look at this a little bit more. Like for every pair of boots he has, he could wear either, you know, the red jacket or the blue jacket. And then of the overalls, he could wear all three of those. So for every pair of boots, there's another two combinations and then another three combinations. And that's going to give me six. And then if you were to wear the second pair of boots, then he could still with that second pair of boots wear all both jean combinations or jacket combinations and overall combinations. All right, well, I'll do another video doing some more of these word problems. The key is really to do a lot of practice problems. Go slow, be thorough, look at the answers if it's multiple choice, see if you can eliminate answers that don't make any sense. A lot of times on no calculator problems, you don't even have to do the arithmetic. If you got a pretty good sense of numbers, you can eliminate all the answers that don't make sense. New to the channel, think about subscribing. Uh, really keep up on your math. The more you do, the more fluent you become in it, and the more you practice, the better you get at it. All right, good luck on whatever exam you're taking.